I quit. I just do. I can't, I can't stand it anymore. I can't stand any of these productivity apps that I don't use anymore that I wanted to talk about in today's video. Okay, so for me, I have been a huge fan of productivity apps for a long time. I've been using a myriad of them for a couple of years now. And for me, I do go through phases of being like, okay, this software is not working for me anymore, right? Like it was great when I first wanted to use it, but now eh, not so much. Like I don't really need to use it anymore. And that's kind of where we're at with a lot of different tools in my tool belt. And the reason I want to break down these tools as something I no longer use is not because I want to write a hit piece on any of these or indict any of these as they stink. What I really want to talk about is how they did play an integral part in my productivity workflow and how now, you know, it's like, why would I, why would I deal with them? Like, you know, like, why would I use them? They're not as good as I thought they were. And frankly, it's more so for the reason that they don't suck, but because they don't serve the same purpose that they did. And I found a better alternative. So first and foremost, I want to talk about one of the best productivity apps on this list, which I did get away from, which was Google Calendar. So as you can see here, Google Calendar is a product that I still kind of use uh, as a time blocking layer. Right here, you can take a quick look at all the different stuff that I have going on in my daily life. However, the, the issue here is that I don't really use it for anything but a placeholder to then augment the Google Calendar system and then utilize Morgan. So I really don't have a problem with Google Calendar. Like it's not something where I was just, you know, absolutely angry at the product. For me, the main thing was I didn't have a need for it anymore because in the calendar game, there are a lot of free and premium tools that you can augment your current systems with. And for me, that thing that was being augmented was Morgan. Like I don't dislike how the Google UI and interface work, but it just felt a little bit worse to me than what I was going to get out of Morgan because Morgan not only has, I think a better color scheme, it has built in dark mode, but it also has things like open invites where I can quickly grab a slot, press open invite, and then send out a, a meeting slot saying, hey, you can book a time with me then. You also have the ability to do things like a booking page where somebody can essentially get this link from me and they can book a time with me to chat. And if it wasn't for these kind of upgrades, I'm not sure whether I really would have went away from Google Calendar because maybe some people think, oh, it doesn't have an app, so why would you use it? The fact of the matter is it has a great mobile app. I actually used it decently often for mobile, even when I switched to Morgan. But if I type Google Calendar in here, I do actually get it as an app. All you need to do is install it as an app if you have Microsoft Edge by going and pressing this button. Or if you're on Chrome, you can install it as a shortcut in the same way. Now, something important that I want to point out as well is, as you'll notice, <laughs> speaking of Chrome, I don't use Chrome anymore. I'm actually in Microsoft Edge right now. And the reason for that is because Chrome is not built to be fast. It is built to be bloated. Let's be real. The speed testing on browsers would say so, as well as the RAM usage. If you go through any of the different tests that you'll find on the internet and a myriad of different blogs that people have done, you'll actually find that Edge significantly outperforms Chrome. This is true on PC for sure, as in most of these speed benchmark tests will find that Chrome sort of at the bottom. And I ended up switching to using Brave for a while, which I did enjoy. However, while not only Chrome is overbloated for RAM and is just way worse in that capability, I found that Brave had some frustrations as well when it would turn off third-party cookies that were needed sometimes. And I found that Edge had some additional benefits to it that made my browsing experience better. Like the great suspender as a extension was sunsetted last year. It's essentially a Chrome extension that as you can see right here, suspends your tab, reducing the RAM usage after a certain period of time that you're not using it. However, for me, I ended up finding out that Edge had that built in as well as a couple other features. So I figured why not switch to a Chromium based browser that already has some of the fast functionality that I'd like to have without the RAM usage of Chrome, as well as a built in RAM saver. So, I wanted to take a look at it and see whether it would work for me. And for all intents and purposes, I have used Brave pretty faithfully. I spent my whole life using Chrome, switched to Brave for two years, 
and then switch to edge after the frustration of the third party cookies disabling and having to manually click that off often and just deal with some other minor bugs was something I didn't want to deal with anymore. Chrome, Brave, they're both gone. I use Edge now. I've made many videos as to why that is the fact if you want to check out the other content on this channel about it but I would give Edge a test. And if you are getting a new Windows computer, some of the best advice I can give you is don't switch your browser. Literally keep it the same. There is no reason. Uh, Chrome is not gonna make it a better experience. It's not 2012. You don't have to deal with Internet Explorer. Edge is much better. Now, ironically though, as you can tell here, I'm a bit of a fanatic in regards to performance and what I like. I did leave the Microsoft Office though. Like I don't use Microsoft Office for business. I used to use OneDrive in my business for a couple of years and then I switched to Google. And the reason for that is I found that Google Sheets, Google Docs, Google Drive, especially, and Gmail as well, were all just better experiences than Microsoft Office. Microsoft Office is a little bit more on the secure side, but when it comes to data security, I'll be completely blunt. I, for my own, for like my own sake, I don't care. Uh, I'm not out here worried about someone hacking all of my instances. I'd also read that Google Drive was a little bit better on if there was issues with stuff inside of your storage. People had had multiple gigabytes of file storage loss with Microsoft, whereas Google was better about it. I do also like the fact that Google and Slack have some you know, easy integrations in a sense when it comes to all the automations I do. I feel like I have a better experience when setting them up with Gmail and Google Drive. OneDrive just seemed a little bit more clunky when it comes to third-party connections. And I didn't really want to use like Microsoft Office Excel files or PowerPoint or anything like that. I actually like the Google Sheets experience more, mainly because it's more easily shareable. And as much as Excel is really great, Google Sheets has improved so much in the last couple of years that it's serviceable for me. I'm not doing mass data changes like I was in my marketing job previously. I don't really need Excel, so I figured I'd do that. And while it may have been a little bit cheaper to go with like Microsoft and just use Teams and OneDrive, eh, I like Slack more. I like Google Drive more. I'm willing to pay the extra couple bucks a month per person to have the better experience. And after having experienced one at a job and then another at a job, it was really cool. And I figured as well, there was always a world in where the Google ecosystem would implement great generative AI to go along with Google, the search engine and Bard connecting together and you're starting to see a lot of cool generative AI stuff in that space. Funny thing is, I wanna point out, I considered myself a pretty productive individual with the old items in this setup with Google Calendar and OneDrive and, and Brave or Chrome. However, I find that it's a lot better now. And this kind of is a great example of how I've switched around apps every once in a while. And you're able to completely adjust what you're doing and find that eventually you'll see this is the tool set that I enjoy. I didn't enjoy OneDrive as much. I didn't enjoy just using Google Calendar as much or Brave or Chrome. And at the end of it, I found the tools that I liked. So I always recommend that you do take a honest look at whether you like what you're doing with your tool set because basic, basic principle and productivity that needs to be talked about more is the highest indicator that you're gonna be productive is that you enjoy what you're doing. Therefore, if you enjoy the ecosystem that you've created digitally, you will be more productive because you will spend more time inside of it rather than spending time on more low friction entertainment things. That's how psychology works. And I think we should utilize that when it comes to creating ecosystems for ourselves and for our entire business, right? Like cost savings is one thing, but if the entirety of your company enjoys the ecosystem that you've put them in from a digital tech standpoint, they'll probably be marginally more productive than the couple hundred bucks a year in cost savings or a thousand buck a year in cost savings because people forget they're paying these like inordinate salaries in comparison and they're like no, no 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 we gotta go for the cheaper option i'm like bro if they're more product <laughs> whatever uh i do think about that often and that's kind of off tangent but what i will say is that either things work for people figure out what works for you and your team and if you want to learn more about tools like this and how to improve your productivity make sure to check out other videos like this one right here